How's it going, folks? And welcome to another edition of the Critical Beard Podcast. Critical Beard Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, the Cardinal, and this is my <laughs> other host. I'm uh, the Meatball, right? No, I'm Matthew Broderick from uh, Godzilla 1997. That's it. That's what we're. It was. It's the hat, right? It's the yeah. hat. Yeah. <laughs> well, man, what are we gonna do? That's a lot of fish. <laughs> All right. I saw that movie in the years. Um, it, the trailers looked so good. I, <laughs> they really did. <laughs> they fooled us. <laughs> and it was another one of those movies when I was a little kid and I saw it and I went, I'm a little kid and I didn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> These grownups in here are you know probably what? real pissed I'm not off. even going to lie. I still watch it every once in a while, though. I'm not going to lie. It's, it's in that train wreck sort of way. I still enjoy it. But uh, I'm, I'm I'm a glutton for punishment, I guess. I don't. Know. I like to <sighs> you know, dig, you know, my. Never mind. Um, it's gonna so... be gross. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say something real gross, and I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Be real it's, a, it's a it's a family podcast. <laughs> Is it? I don't know. Probably not. Fuck families. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, there goes there goes. Uh, half You're watching this. Ever. Fuck your family. But not McDonald's. I love no. McDonald's. I do want to take a second to to recognize our sponsor, McDonald's. Um, uh, eat fresh. Eat fresh. Wait. <laughs> Shit. Uh, I'm loving it. You know what else I'm loving? What are you playing that you love? What you playing? You stole my segue. I'm playing the same thing I, I, I was I playing last time. <laughs> um, Animal Crossing. They just added. A, a uh, update right, the, where I can, month I can jump. Well, now I can jump into the ocean with my swimsuit and swim around in the ocean. But you have to be, uh, you have which to, like, you were able to do. No, no, you just go and buy it in the store. It's Animal Crossing. You got to buy it within game currency. I mean, what do you think this is? Do you even Animal Cross? Not, but, not lately. <laughs> but it's something you could do in New Leaf, and I'm glad, like, whatever. I'm glad they added it. So like around, you get, can you get eat, what, there's shark there's sharks in those waters. Yeah, yeah, whatever. There's also frogs that you can catch in the pond. Yet, uh, you can have frog villagers. So let's just not try to think about anything too hard in the Animal Crossing universe. I want, I want, I want lore, man. I want. It's kind, of, it's kind of like it's kind of like Goofy is a dog, but so is so is Pluto. It's like, wait, what makes them so different? Uh, and I'm also playing uh, Chrono Trigger. I'm almost done. Uh, near the end. The so, trigger of I'm Chrono pretty Cross. excited about uh, digging into Chrono Cross because I haven't played. I haven't actually sat there and played that game uh, more than a decade, easy. So. And so be- I'm having the hardest time trying to fucking download that thing, man. It's like because it's like it exists on the like PlayStation Store. If I go to it, like on my on the app. But then when I actually try to go to to look it up on the PSP, I can't find the game. The game doesn't show up when you search it. This is really weird. But it's it's still there. Like it still exists somewhere. It's just impossible. They like to make they like to make it real hard. No. Yeah, you can always you, know. you can always just uh, jailbreak your PSP and just turn it into just a just download a bunch of ISOs and just. But I mean that would be unethical, and I don't condone. Right, we that. if anything here are are all about ethics. If, if we know um, anything about you, Cardinal, it's <laughs> just. I mean, I would never say it. anything bad about anyone or anyone's families. This is a family podcast, like we yes. said. Um, so eat fresh. Eat so fresh. what are you playing? <laughs> I love it. I love it. I am, I am playing. Um, so I'm playing, still playing through uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Torn of the Golden Country. I finally went back and beat Xenoblade That's a Chronicles mouthful, 2. That's a mouthful, man. <laughs> yeah, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Torn of the Golden Country. It's like, you can just call it Xenoblade Chronicles the Golden Country. It, it is just like another game. So, But like, anyways, um, still playing that. Uh, it's really good. Uh, like I said, really good. the characters are better than the only Chronicle 2 character. That's, that's, a, that's a shame. I did like the ending of 2 a lot, but anyways, um, I might actually go back and do another video on that, even though yeah, it's, you should. Um, 
it's kind of expired yeah. as far as the uh no such thing okay okay yeah you do you do what you like I I know. These, there's like I there's like. there's always a niche crowd that are that's just gonna be like yeah yeah i'll watch that like chrono cross <laughs> there's gonna be there's gonna be a lot of people who want to want to see a video on chrono cross mm-hmm. that game is super old that game's 21 years old like come on to, to date, I have a terrible, shitty lighting, really bad, like, I feel like I'm, it's not even well-spoken review on Nier Automata, and that's still, like, by far the most views we have on this channel. <laughs> and I'm like, it's like, it's so, it's like this bad, and I'm trying to be quiet, because, like, Heather's, like, in the other room, so I'm just like, yeah, so the game's, like, really good. And, and maybe, that, like, maybe that's <laughs> telling, uh, you should just be quiet, Cardinal. Yeah, maybe I should shut the fuck Maybe you should just shut up. <laughs> um... <laughs> People don't like me. Um, so, yeah, I'm still playing Torn in the Golden Country. Um, uh, finished uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and um, finished The Last of Us 2. I got a review. It's going up soon. It's coming. Um, it's, it's finished. It's, 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 in the, it's in the it's editing in the, room. It's in the, it's in the, yeah, it's in the editing room. It's in the editing room. That'll be up soon. Uh, yeah, we're gonna I've get our editor to get on it as soon as possible. Hey, hey, Eddie, yeah, could you Eddie the editor? Yeah, could you hurry up? <laughs> Eddie <Thanks>. the editor. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. Guys, uh, I start. I started playing because uh, you can unlock uh, Xenoblade Chronicles uh, theme for Tetris. <laughs> uh, for Tetris. Oh, oh yeah, uh, I saw that. Ninety nine. So I started playing. I jumped into <laughs> Tetris ninety nine again today. I just to unlock that theme. And, uh, yeah, I got, like, all into it, dude. I was just, like, because I, I kind of got into it when it first know. came out. But it's it's such a cool concept, and it's so, it, it sounds so stupid. It sounds like something someone well, would have said, see, like, as a Nintendo joke. That's the Nintendo charm. Yeah, that's yeah. the Nintendo charm. Like, they can take something, uh, like Battle Royale and be like, oh, uh, yeah, Battle Royale is pretty pretty popular at Fortnite. Uh, 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 Tetris. Yeah, or they like, can take like uh, like Splatoon, like they can yeah, just be like, like, yeah, fighting uh, multiplayer, um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but with like, paint. Like that sounds <laughs> super dumb, uh, but it's not. It's a really cool game. It's, it's, um, it turns out to be better than everyone else's version of the same thing. <laughs> yeah. It's like much That's edgier. That Nintendo. and shit. Nintendo's yeah. like all cute about it. It's like well, like they're willing to take risks in terms of like just trying new new iterations <laughs> of popular genres. So, gotta uh, get them respect. And uh, I started playing, uh, booted up the old Smash Bros. Ultimate. Oh, that's right. funny. That's funny. I picked, I booted that up a couple days ago too. We should play we some should, rounds. I'm terrible. Playing now. online match, bro. I'll fucking, <laughs> I'll fucking cloud you up. Wreck my face. You I'll cloud. You, you will wreck my face. Down. I'm terrible. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> Sounds oddly sexual, but all right. Oh yeah. Or or un oddly sexual. Unoddly, and I'm already pre-playing um, <laughs> Ghosts of Ghosts of Tsushima. I want to play that, that coming game. Out again? Uh, the 17th of this month. Okay. Same day so as coming. Paper Mario. So they're like, they we're gonna make me wait. They're gonna make me wait. They're gonna make me wait. And they're gonna be like, here's two games you want to play. I'm like, I hate when you do that. Whatever. You're gonna like, play both at the same time. Definitely. Because that's who you are. That's yeah. who I am. Those those are two games. Like those are two of my most anticipated things of this entire year. And they're gonna do that same day bullshit on me again. Um, just like they did with Do, just like they did with Doom and Animal Crossing. They're just like, we know you want this, but they're both so like completely opposite that it's yeah. fine. Um, well, let's get into a, a little bit of news. Um, what kind of news we got today, John? John, John, John. John. Oh, this is not a phone. This is my mouse. <laughs> well, on the docket today, John. Apparently, apparently, this this coming in. Next generation games are going to be seventy dollars. That's right, seventy dollars. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, John. Are you talking about seventy dollars, or are you talking about sixty nine ninety nine? Because <laughs> sixty nine ninety nine USD. I mean, dude, just for the fact that that's just hilarious, I will totally pay an extra ten dollars to pay sixty nine dollars for my games, <laughs> and then I'll laugh every time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go to Target and be like, <laughs> when they tell me, uh, I'm gonna be like, how much is this again? And they're gonna be like, how much is this? Nine nine nine. I'm like, I made you say it. Nice, nice. We're sure, we're yeah, sure. family. Um, uh, but yeah, that's the thing. People, I guess people are uh, boohooing about. I don't know. I paid. You know yeah. how much I paid for? You, you know, there's this game called uh, Smash Brothers. 
uh, on the Nintendo 64. You want to know how much I paid for it? $111. Uh, that game was $69.99. It was either sixty nine ninety nine or seventy nine ninety nine. See, I, I don't think what what people don't remember is that back before um, disc based media. Yeah, like Super Nintendo NES before, like there was no set market price. Like nope. a publisher or heck, even the market itself, like Babbage's, could just sell it for however they much how much they want. Like I don't think people have realized how terrible <laughs> that was. Like when they finally went to the set pricing, I, I was happy. Yeah, I can't remember how much that was, but I, I have a distinct memory of 1999 going to Best Buy. It was my birthday. I had kind of like a bad day. Like everything we tried to do fell through and my mom was like driving me around. And my mom took me to Best Buy and she bought me Super Smash Brothers uh, on, on the 64. Smash Bros. Uh, which was, like I said, it was either 69.99 or 79.99. Again, I can't remember. It absolutely was more than $60 though. Mm -hmm. um and then she bought me that for, um, at best buy and then she also bought me mega man x for the super nintendo which i never owned until 99 spoiled um, spoiled and, old. and uh i remember distinctly that that game was 40 bucks yeah. and that game came out in what year mega man x came out in like 92 or 93 i don't remember so i want to say, like, say 93 or 4 but still like a while before that yeah, like so that was like a that's like a game that would be like in a bargain bin at that point, right? And like it's like that game was forty bucks too, and that was a Super Nintendo game. And I was like thinking there, thinking back then, I'm just like, dude, like we're so spoiled, like when it comes to this shit, because those cartridge games didn't go down in price like very much. Like they didn't like it was hard to find like the cheap cards unless you went to like a used place, and it was just like yeah, a, or play a yeah, place that was like game. shutting down or something. <clears throat> um, but but anyway. yeah, I, I think I the last the last big market jump was like what to like ps2 and ps3 era didn't they do a price jump at that point yeah like so i think for a while to 59 49 59 sort of it's always been kind of no because gamecube games were always a little cheaper because they're tiny but not all gamecube okay. games because some some nintendo ones, nintendo like, yeah, like Metroid Prime and and like Zelda and stuff. Those games were still full price, but some of them were like forty and bucks. Um, and I can't remember if there were any that were sixty, but yeah, I think maybe that's when it happened. Like the real price jump to yeah. to like a more fixed price point. But I mean, games are just getting more and more expensive to make, which kind of ties into our main topic today. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that's probably has something to do with it because the, the, the AAA industry is just getting ridiculous. But luckily, like we're starting to see a, a more segmented uh, industry where you have the AAA and you know, have like the budget, which is nice because now we have like like good play games. Now you know you don't have to buy a AAA game to get a solid experience. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, and and in nice. some cases, in some cases, you're almost guaranteed the better experience with the cheap with the indie games because yeah. these people are like pouring their heart and soul. Well, into yeah, the like they, they don't have they it. don't have a huge publisher who's like saying don't head, take risks. Yeah, yeah, yeah don't instead take of the risks. Head, it's just like don't don't do anything. Just do it. Just do it. Just make Madden just, the same as last just, year. Yeah, just <laughs> make uh just make it like this game. That game sold. It's like, but we want to try something new. No. Um, so we'll see. I mean, this is all just based off a of conjecture of like uh, NBA, NBA 2K21. Yeah. yeah. So leads. that just might be uh, EA, right? They 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 own 2K. Yes. Or yeah, I'm pretty sure. Either way, it you, you know it's 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 the publisher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They own who's, 2K. who's doing this. Yeah. So if it's gonna be because it, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I don't know. I don't play the balls. I play NBA Jam. I want to yeah. play some NBA Jam sometime? Uh, yeah, dude, I love NBA Jam. It's like, it's like one of the best sports games. The best sports games I call, ever. I call Bill Clinton. That, oh, man. The best sports games ever are the ones that go <laughs> fucking crazy. Like Blitz yeah. and, and, and yeah. NBA Jams. <laughs> Uh, ones that uh, play more like games than like simulations. Yeah. Well, that's why like people like Tony Hawk so much, like mm -hmm. because and that also brings me game. to a, another point with about the pricing is we're also for the first time in a long time we're seeing a huge like amount of fluctuation and games that aren't just sixty dollars again, with mm -hmm. like Predator, Hunting Grounds, 
You got yeah. the Tony Hawk uh, one and two. Those are like out. those. Um, yeah. a Star Wars Squadron, uh, Squadron, um, which is the, that one's going to be forty bucks too. Nice. Um, yeah, so so maybe this is going to be kind of a more like we're entering an, an era of a game titles market. Are gonna be yeah. Seventy, and then, and then I mean, like, it's kind of like I don't want to call NBA Two uh, K on full fledged, but you know, yeah, I know what you mean. It's a it's a game <laughs> they know that people will pay yeah, full price yeah. for. <laughs> yeah, amen to that. Yeah, and, and they're not gonna. Gonna, gonna. It's 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 the Nintendo. <laughs> we know you're gonna buy it. <laughs> Yeah, except the Nintendo <laughs> stuff is not the same. They're quality. Or whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's why oh, we right. speak long. Oh I yeah, we're Nintendo. Gonna, um, we're gonna rile you up. Speaking, guys. speaking of Star Wars, um, apparently there's a rumor, a big old stinking rumor, that you Disney is planning my on curiosity. Now you <laughs> rebooting. <laughs> Rebooting the Star Wars sequels, which just sounds absurd to me. Like, I don't okay, even wait. rebooting the sequels. What, what does that even mean? Like, m- like, I don't know. Doing like, some sort of like, al- like alternate timeline version that will like, those non-canon or something. Apparently, it's from a a source that has been reliable in the past. Um, I don't like to. to to, to really touch rumors, but this is like this seems. I mean, we just watched Star Wars. I feel like it's somewhat appropriate because, I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of the sequels, but like, come on, guys, just let it go. <laughs> I just, I, 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 yeah, I mean that that's so stupid. Just <laughs> personally, just just move move on. Move, move on. Move Tell, on. Let's talk. Let's talk about the old republic or the high republic yeah. or whatever. Let's let's. Or move. That's so funny because everyone's so obsessed. It's the prequels all over again because everyone's so obsessed with the sequels right now that they're not even like no one's even talking about the the potential of a High Republic uh, content, which we're gonna get High Republic content. Hopefully, not just comic books and stuff. Maybe hopefully we'll get like a High Republic trilogy would be dope. But and no one's even talking about that anymore. Everyone's just talking about the sequels need to be rebooted. No, let's just let's just have new characters and a new a whole new thing, dude. Let's just do something new, man. Yeah, That's, I know. Uh, personally, I know I know a lot of people didn't like. I know Rogue One is kind of one of those that people go back and forth on, but at least we got a big cast of new characters that was like you yeah. know fun. I mean, it was like these all these people we didn't know, and they they all about it wasn't, fun. Okay, there was a, they were well, <laughs> yeah, they. Hey, Chiwit, 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 in way or whatever. That, that yeah, guy was awesome. Sorry, mate. The, 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 the funnest character in that movie was the, uh, the, droid. the droid. He was the Voiced funniest. By... But he was I, so I funny. The, the blind monk was <laughs> awesome. Congratulations, you are being rescued. <laughs> I, <laughs> that was a... Uh, that was uh, uh, see that. It's like, uh, what's his name? Tur- Turdick? Uh, Al- Alan Tut... T- uh... Tudyk. Alan, Alan Tudyk. Tudyk. <laughs> 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 the guy from Firefly. Alan Tudyk. Watch. God damn, Alan Tudyk. That's his yeah. Name. He yeah. He's, no, he's, no, he's no. A great his voice most actor. Famous role ever is Dale and Tucker versus Evil. Did you ever see that movie? It, yeah. I'm, I'm just kidding. It's not his it most famous fun. role. Uh, I'm like, yeah, it was, it was a fun movie. It's a good movie. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so yes, yeah, yeah. uh, so that's that's kind of passe like rumor news that I figure like all right, Star Wars, just calm down, Star Wars people. I feel like even people um, who hated the prequel, the the sequels or whatever, are gonna they even they will be like, oh, come yeah. on. Well, I like, I understand really? the sentiment because like you want you want something because I even like I agree like those characters were wasted like most of the characters in the sequels had cool setups, not taken advantage of well. Like, I get the sentiment of, like, oh, man, wouldn't it be cool if, like, we could, like, redo it and, like, actually get some good characters, like, character arcs? Uh, but just let it go, man. In, like, 20 years, you'll be singing a different song, so. Well, if they really want that, then then have, like, a continuation of, like, what? The, some of the wasted the characters. Like, of, yeah, or, or, or <laughs> like, if, if we could have, like, a, a side movie that's, like, it's like Poe and Finn doing some shit after the movies, you know, or whatever. Oh, I don't know, like adventures. The Adventures oh, of Poe and Finn. I'd watch that. I'd, I'd, I would watch it. 
Because those are arguably the two characters people talk about the most, I think. Um, yeah. Well, well it's the two characters they like shipping the most. <laughs> they like what? They like shipping the most. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Which I can't they're... totally blame them. Like, they're definitely, they definitely got good chemistry together. They do. Um, hey, man, they'd be, they'd be great together. Um, yeah. We also got a little bit of news. Got, a, got some news. You got fresh news? I think they got some. <laughs> Amazon Prime. I think it's Amazon Prime, right? I think it's Amazon. It's, it's, Amazon yeah, Studios. It's Amazon, but yeah. Amazon cool. owns everything. They're making a Fallout TV series. Fallout it's the uh, creators of Westworld, I believe. Worst world. Worst world ever. <laughs> I don't know. I've only <laughs> seen one episode. I've seen the old movie. <laughs> That's some with the old, uh, what's his name from Magnificent Seven? Yul Brynner. Um, <laughs> I'm Yul <Yule> Brynner. Uh. <laughs> I'm dead now. <laughs> uh, uh, family friendly. Uh, Bill Hicks. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, they only gave us like a little teaser. I mean, I mean this, they, so, so the so teaser people, looks like a teaser. So many people, don't they don't know what a teaser is anymore. It's like, this well, was a teaser. You can't really blame them because this was a t- teaser. That was definitely a teaser. Sometimes though, they'll they'll release like full on trailers uh-huh. and be like, "Here's a teaser," it. and it's like, yeah, I, you just showed a... all the characters." <laughs> that was a three minute long <laughs> teaser. <laughs> it's like three minutes. <laughs> yeah, that's not a teaser. That's trailer number one. I mean, like, yeah, I, yeah. But that was definitely a, a teaser. That was that was heck a teaser. Uh, heck they a had team. like the they had like. Old, uh, you know, vacuum tube television. They had the, you know, the green tent kind of design. I'm like, that's... Yeah, please, please stand please by. Stand by that. Yeah. So, I mean... We'll see. I mean, I've heard good things about Westworld, so... Yeah, I, I think the... I mean, I, I respect the writers. I saw the, the pilot, and I, I thought it was good. I, it wasn't that I didn't like it. I just... There's so many shows I can't... Yeah, I just I can't watch them. Too many um, shows. I only I, watch video say game, they're too video game ad- adaptation shows now. <laughs> well, now, nowadays it's becoming a, a possibility. Yeah, because we're it just is. getting Cause, greenlit. Yeah, we got. I mean, we got some really high profile shit. We got like the the writers of Chernobyl doing the Last of Us show for HBO, and we got we got Fallout show coming, and then they announced uh, the the weirdest thing to make a TV show on uh, my my friend Pedro. Yes. Yes. What. Like what, okay, uh, the game looked cool. Like I'm a big, I'm a big Devolver John digital Wick. fan. Is it the John Wick director or the producer or both? I, I don't know. It's just a, yeah. the John Wick crew team, People. somebody. Oh. Um, and that's <laughs> another thing. It's like okay, it, it's it's funny. It's kind of like Fallout, right? Where it's like, or or even The Last of Us. Where it's like it's like from the creators of Chernobyl, bring you The Last of Us on like, HBO. Oh, okay, and you're like, I can see that. Okay, that's All a right. bunch of words, and then they're like. From the creators of Westworld, bring you Fallout on Amazon. And you're like, that's also a bunch of words. <laughs> They're like, my friend Pedro. And you're like, okay, what? <laughs> very, From like the you're... makers of John Wick comes my friend. <laughs> my friend a story Pedro. about a lone banana. A man who talks to a banana because he's insane. At that point, I'm almost like, why didn't you just make a uh, 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 Hotline Miami game. I feel like that would be, or I mean, oh, a TV show would have been no, more right. interesting. Because I, I played my friend, my my friend Pedro, and I kind of felt like it. It sort of like was a little derivative of like Hotline Miami and and Katana Zero because those those had all just already done some of the shit they're they're doing there, and I was just kind of like this story feels oh, a lot like Hotline Miami. They didn't Miami. have bananas. That's true. Okay, and nothing is visually striking as a banana with a with a with a human face on. Trust me. I don't know if I'd call that a human face, but sure. <laughs> um, what what other news did we have? Uh, um, insane this buzzword. just came out I think yesterday. Uh, speaking of like video game shows, um, the 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 planned director of the Metal Gear movie, uh, Jordan Vocht Roberts, uh, oh, had stated in a, I think an interview that he wanted to do a. Metal Gear Solid animated series with the original this... video game cast to release alongside the movie. Oh my god! Now this is just him. Like this is just him going. I would really want, but like, I but mean, it was so. This was on Animal Talking. Yes, 
Yeah, with Gary. So Gary, speaking of, speaking of, the, of all this connecting, so Gary Witta created Animal Talking, which is a was, for the, those of you who don't know, it's literally a talk show that takes place in Animal Crossing. So like with the real avatars like go and sit down on Gary Witta's little couch, and Gary Witta is the writer of Rogue One, the Walking Dead video game, uh, Book of Eli, and etc. Uh, you know stuff like that. He's also writing the that new game that they showed at the ps5 reveal the 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 project uh Ath- oh yeah the, the square enix game yeah. yeah he's he's writing that so um he has the talk show and so he was talking to fellow friend writer because he's really good friends with that guy um jordan Oct roberts he's great Voight. isn't I'm, it Voight, very... Voight roberts i look man I, I don't know. I, uh, I've only talked to the guy a few times, you know. I they don't. should okay. Here's here's a new rule: when a, dir- a director with a weird name is directing a movie, they need to pronounce the name as those credits show up at the yeah, beginning. Yeah, like, like like just say it. What is it? What, what Dennis, is it? Dennis, 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 Dennis Valen- uh, He's directed some of my favorite movies wanna, of this. I want to say your name right. I want to say your <laughs> name right, man. Help me, help, help me, help you, help me. Help you, um, help me, help you. But like, um, and, and then like D- David Hayter like retweeted it, and it's just like, oh, this would be fantastic. Oh, you know David Hayter would be. Do it. Oh, he's <laughs> down for anything. David Hayter, like, I mean, come on, X Men, dude. I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> Zane Getsu from Bloodstained was just Snake's <laughs> voice. I mean, he just wanted to do. He just loves. It's just that voice is so cool, man. It's and they finally, cool. finally released the patch where you can play the whole game as Zane Getsu now, which That's is awesome. awesome. But you have to you have to beat the game first. And but yeah, it's supposed hard. to be like I don't know if it's supposed to be congruent to the movie, like some sort of supplemental material. Um, who knows? But I'm excited for any kind of Metal Gear news. Just any yeah, anything, anything. Um, yeah, he, uh, he he said a lot of stuff, but he also said that the the production of the film was pretty far behind schedule because of yeah all that. So yeah. like the he was kind of hinted I mean, he's like st- don't he's even still in pre- anything he's still in pre production yeah. Until yeah. you know 2022 or some shit like that, like, but whatever. You know, I've, whatever. Man. I've waited longer for less cool things, so that's true. I believe <sighs> that Benjamin Franklin said that. No, it was Thomas Jefferson. Ah, that ah, class. Get it together, Rob. <laughs> no, no, it was Roosevelt. Ah, which one? <laughs> yeah, Roosevelt. Which one? I don't know. The the, the dead one. Uh, They're both sorry. dead. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> the, the boxer or the or the polio? The boxer. <laughs> the boxer. Hey, just because he had Eddie polio Roosevelt didn't mean he boxer, couldn't box, buddy. okay? He he wasn't a kickboxer. He could still box if he was in a wheelchair, man. Come on. That's true. He could win against a regular boxer because he would have more uh, steady <laughs> access to their groin. <laughs> As you can tell, we know a lot about boxing. Go about Teddy that. Repskin. I mean, Roosevelt. <laughs> 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 if, you just, if you just put the tape in the back of his wheelchair, he's. Just... <laughs> okay. uh, that's wrong on some sort of level. Yeah, there's uh, something wrong. I can't. I can't. I can't put out, my finger on it. I'll be offended but... later. Don't okay, worry. Cool, cool. If you watch, watch this later, and we'll just. We'll, we'll I'm, I'm going to write an angry letter to ourselves, <laughs> <laughs> so we get some sort of fan uh, mail. Um, well, speaking so... of angry fan mail. I don't know. That's not a very good segue. But today's topic is about video games and how. I mean, we've we've shared this sentiment for a while now. I know I've had sentiment for shorter, more focused experiences when it comes to my video games. Are video games just getting too long? Yes. Yes, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> the end. All right, guys. Thanks for watching the show. Yeah, uh, this has been. <laughs> drop us a like. Hit that bell. <laughs> no, you know it's funny. So I was trying to figure this out because um, it was like I was like, when did? Because like, okay, of course, our like JRPGs have always been sort of long. Um, even like back to like Earthbound was like for forty hours, uh, but like Chrono Trigger was like twenty hours. But those were considered very long for con- compared to. Uh, games, the games that you know, side scrolling, beat 'em ups, you oh, could yeah. beat in an hour. Uh, there's some games like you could beat in 45 minutes, but they were just hard. Um, that's why like RPGs had to be longer because since you could level up, you could just sort of grind and then and then finish the game. So they were like, oh, there needs to be more story here. 
That being said, by I believe when Earthbound came out, people complained that it was too long. I think a lot of people I did not like that. the length of that game because they were like, it just kept going and blah, blah, blah. And, and now it's considered, it's like, I believe it's the, the standard playthrough time is like 37 hours. Yeah. That sounds so it's like, right. it's like, that's by, by these, by today's standards, 37 hours, like that's like nothing compared to like other yeah. big ambitious RPGs that span multiple continents and shit. Like, um, but this, so the most glaring the most glaring uh, comparison glaring. for me, glaring, was I've been thinking about these two games a lot. I've been thinking about the original Last of Us versus Last of Us 2, and I've been thinking about the original Red Dead versus Red Dead 2. Um, how those games just, especially Red Dead, the first Red Dead was an open world game that was, you could beat it in like 17 hours. Yeah, I mean, it was a really tight experience too. Like and there it wasn't was no, there's not a lot of loose filling and padding. And it even had like a, a whole ending, you know, and then a, a you know epilogue and and you know, but it, it really wasn't a, a long game. And I remember thinking, you know, a lot of Rockstar games weren't very long up until GTA Five. I guess started. I guess four was four was pretty long. I didn't play all of four though, so I can't no, really say. I, I'm a notorious four hater. I, <laughs> I thought I, the, I thought the physics were absolute garbage. Yeah, I just like, hated the yeah, idea just the driving. Fun. People were like, "It's realistic." I was like, "Oh, that's come not on. fun." It's not if fun. If I wanted realistic driving, I'd go outside and drive around the block, <laughs> which is kind of like, and and that's you know, like Red Dead Redemption again. Like the first game can be is like a 17 to, to like 25 hour long experience. Yeah, you yeah. can play it for longer. Of course, there was a lot of other shit to do. Yeah, but for an open okay. world video game like that, that's 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 about the sweet spot for me. And that's why when Red Dead 2 was like 70, 80 hours long, and this is like I, I think I beat it seven, like sixty five or something. It took me seventy and I even like there's a point where I just stopped doing side stuff. I just was just like I'm I'm just golden path. All the way Even though like, the side I, stuff was interesting. <clears throat> like it's not about quality. Like it's it, it for me it it the, the the crux like point is like Witcher three because Witcher three amazing game but the biggest problem with that game is that it doesn't matter how good the content is there's just too much content on that game there's just I still haven't beaten the game like there's just too much stuff to do and then See? I get bogged down and I don't want to play anymore because. It's like when you have like a delicious cake, you're like, this cake is so good, and you just eat twelve pounds of cake, and you're like, I, I can't eat any more of this cake. I love this cake, but yeah, it's like <laughs> for me, that's Persona Five. Like, it's it's yeah. this delicious cake, but it's even for me, it's even like like Persona Five is a is notoriously longer game than The Witcher Three. Yeah, but it's also not an open world because like I can ex I can understand how open world games can just naturally have a longer finishing time because you you know moral games you're like riding somewhere on your horse or you're driving or whatever and then you like see a thing and you go i'm gonna go check that out like so there's that like that that you know emergent, inherent emergent that gameplay. inherent yeah like emergent gameplay where you're just you're gonna go wander off here and there like you're not gonna just golden path it the whole way but um you know persona you have you kind of have to there's not a whole lot of like just there's it's not an open explore you know you don't explore a whole but they lot. have like the the like social stuff you can do during the day you can social kind of ignore stuff that and, stuff and, and, and some mini games and stuff here and there that's that's true but for a game to be that kind of experience and be like 120 hours like standard play through 120 hours you know so like have, longer than than like so we have really long linear experiences which there aren't a lot of so that'd be like your persona fives um and then we have like the like open world that is overly long but the content is good like witcher 3 and then we have the ubisoft problem which is just huge amount of dot two and it's, it's just it's it's big but it's not it's not engaging it's not it's i mean if you <clears throat> find it fun it's literally I mean, checking, if you like <laughs> yeah like checking boxes i mean that's fine but <laughs> you have to distinguish it from you know, a Witcher 3 or a Persona 5. 
Um, and and that's kind of where you know I, th- I think like Witcher Three redefined what a side quest could be by making the yeah, side yeah. stuff even interesting. Where it's like, oh, you need to go fetch this thing from this guy, and then you get there, and then the guy's like, uh, yeah. oh yeah, no, that was stolen from me by this guy, and then then it turns out this guy's a ghost, and then this guy turned into a monster. And, and they, they always, like, Whoa, which with their, with Witcher Three, they always, I mean, this the side quest, I mean. They were amazing. Like they either, they either tied in with the setting, they either fleshed out the setting, they they uh, f- fleshed out the theme, or they they connected directly or, to the main story. Or fleshed like, out the beast. It was, it was a beautiful. Yeah, out the beast like, area, meet some yeah, it was monster. like very very good way of doing. It. I still say that game is just too long though. Like it's just so. It I doesn't totally, matter if the cake is good. If there's too much cake, there's too much cake. I so I I this is the one. The one instance where I totally agree with everyone that The Witcher 3 is probably too long. But because I enjoyed my time in that world (laughs) so much, I did everything I possibly could. I did all the DLC, and I still was like, there's just not enough of this game. Where you know, it was like it's like the only game that's ever happened. Yeah. You know, like where I, I literally guess... like I wanted every piece of that cake, and I was just I was bloated, and I was like, oh, and I was having like. So seizures. I guess it goes down to like, <laughs> I mean, and some people like, you know, like like the Ubisoft checklist stuff. I mean, I guess like too long is of course going to be a subjective thing, but. Like, I guess it's just up to, I mean, is, is there an objective, like, line across where it's like, okay, man, like, like with Last of Us 2, we don't want to get too much into it, but, like, some narrative things should have been cut, some narrative things should have just, like, some segments should have just been shortened down, like, some were just a little too long, like, I guess it's more about pacing, because pacing yep. can really slow down an experience. Absolutely, so. because there's, there's some things there's some games where the pacing is just so well done that you don't even notice that the game is is like you're like holy shit this is like over like uh um i I wrote a couple of examples um uh i think i think look at you with your notes hey (laughs) um i think you know when it comes to like open world games i I wrote like spider-man and red dead redemption one or two where it's just sort of like it's the, the way that things are happening, it's just constantly like interesting and, and engaging. And, and even, even when, you know, like in Red Dead one, there's the classic, like you go to Mexico and yeah. it, it, there's this big kind of scene change. And then it play it's like the first song game I ever remember that like played this like song and like they have this whole theme of, of, of you, you, you know, wandering into Mexico and it, it's still in, in this game, that game, that game doesn't even like in my head, I'm like, that game was only like twenty hours. Like, <laughs> like I guess it just it didn't feel like that because I, yeah. I, I was engaged the whole time with that game. Um, and for me, it also, it has to do with another thing, which is what Red Dead Redemption Two kind of led me to realize. When it's a game that's not an RPG, right? So The Witcher, there's so much to upgrade. There's so much stuff, or 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 like even a Persona, or or uh, you know. Final Fantasy or whatever. You have yeah. so much stuff. You have armor. You have weapons. You have crafting. You have like all these extra things. Horizontal, horizontal Whereas leveling. Once you go yeah. in Red Dead Two, you get to a point in that game. It's like halfway through where you just are. Everything you own is like the best thing, yeah. unless you want to do these crazy quests that'll take you all over the place and you don't have fast <laughs> travel. So you're like fuck. So like to me, it gets to a point where like I'm like okay, I'm not getting any better. I'm already maxed out. My character is, like, not maxed out necessarily, but, like, my character is plenty strong to get through yeah. the end of this game at this point. Yeah, like, it's, it's like getting, getting <laughs> the final weapons in a Final Fantasy. It's like, I could get the final weapons, but I'm just going to get them and then beat the game and that's it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and so it, it just, to me, it, it does it, like like I said, you said, you know, we weren't getting too much into it, but, like, with with The the Last of Us 2 or, or Red Dead 2 or... Um, um, other things and it, it also depends on genre of course because you yeah. know like i've said you know uh, i don't think this is a spoiler but like i mean i it took me about it took me about 30 hours to be the last of us too to me for a linear story driven you know action adventure game yeah. that's way crazy long uh i think their sweet spot for that kind of game is like like seven to ten hours 
uh, in my opinion. You know, that's that's generally what the Uncharted games were at. I think the last of us. Yeah, game, I feel like the like Unch- Uncharted hours. Uncharted series had had really <clears throat> great narrative pacing. Like the game, four, those four games did, just doom, doom, doom. Four did drag. I remember people saying that four yeah. was too long, and that game was like sixteen hours. <laughs> and no, people I, like, this I'll, game's oh, too long. I'm like, it's oh, definitely it's, it's definitely the longest of the of the Uncharted. That's for sure. But I, I do think it depends on genre. Like, you know, if a game is a side-scrolling, if it's an old-school Castlevania game, you know, of course, if, if it's only, like, two or three hours long, yeah. that's fine. Well, but if it's, it's... it's more about, like, I think it's more just by pacing, like, not just narrative pacing. So, like, in a more narrative-focused game, uh, like Last of Us, where there is there is combat, but the combat is really just kind of reflective interludes of strategic action until you get to the next narrative part, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and then, like, there, like, narrative narrative pacing is really important, but but more like non-narrative games. I mean, you have to have game... You, like you said, with the with the the spreading out of the horizontal leveling systems, like, that needs to be paced. Uh, so something mm-hmm. like Red Dead 2, like, you know, you have, the, you have the, 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 the vertical leveling system, which it doesn't really have a vertical leveling system, but in Final Fantasy, it would be like, you know, level one, level two, level three or four, and then horizontal leveling system would be like the materia system. So yep. like, like Final Fantasy VII is just perfectly paced in terms of uh, the Absolutely. horizontal and, and the, the, the... That's another uh, example of a game that leveling just has system. such great pacing. It's yeah, because like... you, you really have to, you really have to like master the two of them. So you're right, it go, it is from genre to genre, but um, I think every genre has to like, they have to, they have to kind of balance, um, you know, have to balance the leveling. If it's just, and, like, gear you're getting or, like... Because, I mean, games are... I mean, most games are about empowering the player, right? Like, you want to... And when you stop feeling empowered, like you said with the Red Dead 2, it's just like, I don't feel empowered anymore. This is just boring. Can we get the story done? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You, you get to a point where you're, you're, you're not moving forward as, as, as a character who, like, a, you know, you're not getting better. So you're just, like wandering around for the sake of wandering around and i know some people absolutely love that game. yeah that game, and that game was it was a great game, game was it was it was it's funny we have each year so, so far since like what eight 2018 2019 and and 2020 now we've had that one game that everyone bitched about that was too long and <laughs> and it was so divisive that it was just like crazy. And, you know, 2018, we had Red Dead 2, where you had people all over the place with that. You had people giving that 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10, best game ever. And then you had other people that were like, I, I just can't even finish it. They, they couldn't finish it because it was just, it was, it was such a slog, or they thought it, it was. A slog. Not, well, they, and, I, I heard most complaints about the, the animation cycles in that game because they're just oh, so 100%. long. Yeah, it's, <laughs> are, and that's, yeah, that's can't another deny thing. It. Like, like you said, so the, the pacing. It's like yeah. I get I get what they're doing. They want you to yeah. exist in this realistic world, and they want you to like you're going through every drawer in a house and actually yeah. checking someone's pockets when you're patting them down. That's cool. In the first four hours, uh-huh. that's cool. it's, and then after cool. a while, you're like, oh my yeah. god, I just stopped looting bodies because yeah. yeah. I was like, I, I'm not gonna do. <laughs> Halfway through the game, I just stopped looting. I'm like, I don't need it. Like, and that sucks <laughs> when like when like a game like that where like looting like it should like you should be happy when you see something to loot right but then mm-hmm. you're just like halfway through the game and you're like i don't need the loot even if i wanted the loot it's just gonna be something i don't need like i uh... <laughs> I, I will say though that is something the last of us still is, is good at is is making it making things realistic but not making it slow yeah and and like even when you're looting, you're you know you're just grabbing shit off the off the top, you know. And it's like yeah. it's very quick. It's not overly done. And I I do like that still. Um, but there's it, there yeah there, like you said, there's different kinds of pacing, and it just depends on what game you're talking about and what kind of yeah. pacing it is. But I think it's one of those things you know it when you see it, like or you know it when you're experiencing it. You're just like, I'm bored, you know. But, <laughs> like what the hell? I, mean, I think I think Seven remake suffered from pacing issues too yes but i think that game was this the perfect length i yeah. think that game oh, had it a shouldn't great have been length. any longer <laughs> it should not um, actually i think it should have been probably like five or so hours shorter but it was still a good prop, length. yeah it, it was it was just at the bit there was a part towards the beginning where you're kind of going okay what am i doing and yeah. and there weren't the a whole, lot you know, like uh, the per, as as tim rogers calls it the prestige tours that the game does where <laughs> you're just 
walking slowly while so- a character Someone's is talking, talking at you. And you're jogging. Wow, look at this prestige tour of this area. That's, like that's such so a, long. That's such a like PS4 level, like PS4, Xbox One, like level started thing, in which, three. Which, but yeah, it, yeah, yeah, it, it, it's such a thing where you're, you're jogging behind someone and they're like, mm-hmm. "So this is our city. We live here. So we go over there. Blah blah blah." Uh, and then you know, it's like the un- Uncharted did it so much, and it was just like uh-huh. some of the, and, and it's it, it's cool at first when they're trying to showcase graphics but like you know that that's going to age poorly you know that we're going to go back to that game and we're going to go oh my god this game looks like garbage quit showing me the city and let me just <laughs> let me just or play you the just, game. if you want to replay it you just want to play it like mm-hmm. when i was replaying final fantasy 7 remake i was just like hurry oh, i don't care about can i skip the prestige tours like yeah can, is, can i just press start and just say skip skip tour and then let me skip it. If you because... follow that path over there, it'll lead you to where you need to go. And you're like, okay, cool. And they're like, but can first, I go? But let first, let me show you where the shop is. And you're like, <laughs> let me just find it on my yeah. own. It's yeah. a linear game. So, oh my God, it's the linear I mean, game. <laughs> so you know, we we've discussed that you know games can be too long. It depends on the genre. It depends, but it kind of goes down to the pacing. Now, do you think that like bad pacing? I mean, you you said earlier we both agree that games are generally too long these days. Do you think that there's a pacing problem, like across AAA, the AAA industry? Do you I think I they think have their heads up their bums. I I think what it is is there's a need um, to put everything in the game because they it's like I remember this this was such a deal before and I don't hear it much anymore, but they're like. You know, is is so and so game worth sixty dollars? You know, is it is this a sixty dollar experience? You don't hear and, that anymore, and, and you don't hear that anymore because every developer just shoves as much yeah. bullshit as they possibly can into a game until it's yeah. bursting at the seams with content, <laughs> and you're like, bro, chill, yeah. like God, just stop. Like they, 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 they go for it. the quantity, like, quantity over you, quality, and 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 it's still for some reason. Remember that thing? It's like. This one is, you know, it's like they're like Skyrim is three times the size of Oblivion, and you're like, I don't need it to be. Is it? <laughs> like, when was was there any point during Oblivion where I was like, this game is way too small, bro? <laughs> but uh, but I remember hearing, but I mean, you're right. I do remember hearing hearing people be like, you know, you know, uh, I this is not worth this is not this game's only fifteen hours. I'm not getting my money's worth. It's like. Like I like I remember people saying like 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 you're renting it like it's like oh man I paid sixty dollars I want at least a dollar an hour like like that's not that's not that doesn't that doesn't translate like that doesn't well, make sense. And the weirdest thing is people don't have that that mentality with movies. Exactly. You know I mean? No no one no one goes into to the Hangover and and go oh that was only an hour and a half what the fuck I paid fucking ten dollars to watch this movie and it's like. Yeah, but it you know it's a comedy. But then you know they're like, yeah, but Lord of the Rings cost the yeah. same to go watch, and that movie was yeah. four times as long. And they're like, hey, you don't hear people no talking about it. it. You have well, the two I mean, guys on the internet arguing about Lord of the Rings and The Hangover. It's not a thing. <laughs> <laughs> or like albums. Yeah, like, it's, I do it, remember it it being a thing with uh, with albums. You remember there yeah. were people that would talk to album like like to, like a Tool album. It's like it's only <laughs> seven songs, but but the the album's like the an hour and a half long. Songs are like fifteen minutes long each. <laughs> it's like, are you kidding me? And then and then there were like there were those albums. I I remember there was a big one. I think it was The Strokes had an album that was like, oh man, it was like it was like thirty minutes long or twenty five minutes long. It was like super short. Yeah, and it had like twelve songs on it or something. And and uh, Beck people, sometimes. Sometimes Beck puts out an album. It's like I'm like I I, I love I I wait with bated breath every Beck release. I'm like yes Beck, but sometimes he'll put out an LP that's like 30 minutes long, and like even still like I'll listen to it. And I'm like I really liked that. Sure wish it wasn't 30 minutes though, because <laughs> that's but like me, that's like an EP length. <laughs> but to me, an album can be an experience, but it can yeah, also yeah, be something yeah. you just that you just put on. And I can see people getting upset about that because it's something that you 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 put on and then you want to like well, sit back and just do something else. And then mm. if it's already like over, like damn it, I gotta I'm change the I gotta change the fucking CD again, or I gotta change the record or whatever. That's not a thing that people argue about anymore because we have Spotify. Yeah. So That's nobody true. talks about the length of the No one even talks before. about records anyway, man. There's no. only like I never hear <laughs> 
<laughs> and I, I'm 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 a li- I'm an I'm an all album. I'm not. A, I've never been a shuffler. So like, if I put a record on, put an album on, I'm listening to that bitch all the way through. They're like, man, you like Dark Side <laughs> of the Moon, man? I love that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know it was an album before it was a shirt, what? man. <laughs> is that like that? Is that like that Joy Division thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love I love that, man. I love, I love that, that Joy album, Division. The, shirt. I love that album, The Misfits, man. That's my favorite <laughs> one. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so, so anyway, I, th- I think, I think you're onto something with, uh, like a collective response to the consumer going, this isn't worth, you know, I need something worth my time. And they're going, especially someone like Ubisoft, um, I hate to bag on Ubisoft, but they're just so like, it's, it's... I, I buy it, dude, I'm, I'm a person who I bought the division too. I bought, I bought Assassin's I bought, I buy, but they don't Assassin's make all bad Creed. games. Like they, they, they make good games sometimes. I, I buy every Assassin's no. Creed. If they came out with a goddamn Splinter Cell, I'd fucking buy it. If they just fucking release one, <laughs> they just don't. Play um, you know, I'll I'll play I play the, all the Far Cries. You know, I'll do it, man. I'm I'm the like, baby. I don't love those games. Aren't my favorite games, but they are like popcorn. You know, I for me, I don't I don't know I don't know because it just seemed like it's because I can't really think of a modern game that's not a JRPG. Um, because with JRPGs, you kind of know they're going to be kind of... Yeah, kinda those have been games that have been you know notoriously mean? long from, like, just from forever. <laughs> because much to get-go. Like, it, because like, Dragon, been... like Dra- Dragon Warrior, Final <laughs> Fantasy 1, like, those were com- compared to, like, freaking Contra, Mario right. or Contra. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. It, they were, like, amazing. They were, like, multi-hour experiences. Um, so they've always been kind of on the bleeding edge of, like, long... But, but even even then, even then, it, it's too long. I, I wish like I, I wish these games weren't so long. Like I, you're talking to a person who just went through like almost three fucking Xenoblade games, and like like they're too long. Like sh- they were a little you know longer. what I mean? And Xenoblade <laughs> no longer, Chronicles, please. Xenoblade Chronicles, to me, is one of the best JRPGs I've ever played, and I have very little things to complain about that game. And and but at this point, and I love like there's so many JRPGs I love, but at this point, I it, one of my main problems is that it's too long. But every JRPG is too long, like all of them, except for Chrono, <laughs> except for Chrono Trigger, except for Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy VII. Just like it's not, yeah. <laughs> yeah, only I'm like sure. I'm sure if long. I did, I'm sure if I did a deep dive on Seven, I'd probably find some pacing problems. But uh, yeah, in my brain, in my brainium, my my brain tornado, your uh, your your cranium. Your, your I, I, I don't think of anything. I can't think of any part that like really dragged in the end in seven, but yeah. I'm sure that once we replay it, it'll come up. Um, I do have a theory though. Um, so I think that remember that whole, the whole thing where like a triple a, you know, especially like a triple a, like third person, first person shooter always came packed with a multiplayer. Mm-hmm. Well, that, that, Feature has been toned down a lot more it has. In, in, in this gen. So I think for me, what I think it is is to because the the multiplayer was always added to increase the value, right? Like so, so mm-hmm. Uncharted, they uh, in three they added that multiplayer, which well, is a cool three multiplayer, four, which was really fun, man. Yeah, and even cool the Last of Us, the first Last of Us had that had yeah. actually the really factions. good multiplayer. Yeah, that that was really fun multiplayer. I was terrible at it, and I always died constantly. <laughs> but it was still, I recognized the quality. But, like, I think that once they kind of started chopping off that multiplayer, because that's probably really expensive to do, you know, um, they were, like, trying to compensate by making games more bloated and longer because they wanted people to feel like they were getting their money's worth. But what they were really doing is artificially bloating something that didn't need to be. Yeah. And, and instead of telling this story that was just this really, this story you want to tell. Which is yeah. again, you know, movies. Even the you know the longest movies in the fucking world are only like three or four hours long. You know, like yeah. I don't think there's a longest. movie that's over four four hours. I don't th- I've never seen a movie that's five hours. No. Yet. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> maybe some obscure <laughs> Russian film. Maybe the ones that don't have multiplayer <laughs> will be. Um, but, but yeah, like I, I just I don't know. I, that's my theory. That once mm. they started kind of cutting the multiplayer off. And then deciding that it was cheaper that to just make true. it They longer. stopped kind of. Uh, they stopped doing that. They stopped adding in the the obligatory uh, multiplayer mode. And um, 
to me, to me, there's there's a couple of examples um, and other examples where of a game. So like there's a you know the game Days Gone that came out uh, was that last year? Yeah, it was. The zombies. Uh, Days Gone. You know that game kind of had some you know critical blah blah blah. I actually really enjoyed that game just for the sake of driving my motorcycle around and. Um, you know, a lot of the stuff that Red Dead Redemption 2, as far as an open world goes, made very obtuse. This one made like a little more fun. Like, you know, like it was just like just picking up ship off the ground. It would just disappear off the ground and shit. Like I just, you know, it, it made stuff like that easier. But that game was like 60, 70 hours long. And I just I didn't have that fucking time. I was like, I, I don't know. I don't want to do this. So it gets to a point. I was like, I don't know what I was talking about. This game is awesome. But then after like 20 hours, it's like the fuck is this game going to end? What the fuck is happening? And it just started falling apart and characters started just sort of like, like dropping off. And then you go like really, 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 really long without seeing a cut scene. And, and uh, you know, it's almost like you started to see the cracks form. You were like, why didn't they just make this shorter? If they made this a 20 hour game, it would have been awesome. Yeah. But they made it. So a like the publishers hour. are just like, Oh no, 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 no. No. Remember when they said that they wanted their money's worth and then we did the, the multiplayer and then they didn't like the multiplayer. So, we still need to make it big. We need to make it long and big. And it's funny too, because they, you know, they did that same that multiplayer thing, even you know, even over to something which I never thought we'd see multiplayer in, which is like Metal Gear Four and Five. Um, both, you know, it's it's weird to think that those had more. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah you have, know, like, you know, Konami was buying that. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> and they, they were like, yeah, we got to put that in there. Um, but it's like, I've never played. A, Castlevania game with multiplayer that wasn't a fighting game on the Wii. <laughs> Judgment. And technically, technically, the Metal Gear Solid uh, online started on the PS2. Started it on yeah on the the uh, um, special edition version of Metal Gear Solid Three had uh, had the first Metal Gear Online. And that's the question I want to ask it's you. It's pretty terrible. <laughs> Why? While, while we're on the subject of Metal Gear, because you're the expert. And that's one I, I forgot to really look up because I was doing a lot of research on, on game length because, you know, time like really warps your perception because like, I mean, when you're a kid and like to me, to me, Chrono Trigger, Earthbound and Zelda, uh, Link to the Past and Final Fantasy VI were all like 150 hours long. Because... <laughs> you know, like with, with Xenogears, you're like, how long, <laughs> how long is that game? I'm like, 128 that's how long it took me the first time, but it's like a 60 hour experience. But you're also a kid and you, you don't have anything that you, we didn't have the internet and like, yeah. you know, like we also, and also I would like play the game. Like I, I wouldn't even do like any of the castles and stuff. I would just like make up my own narrative and be like, I'm on my way to a job. And like, you know, I'd pretend I was doing <laughs> other shit in those games. Like I just like, you're not so, allowed to have imagination in, in modern <laughs> video games, man. Don't yeah, you know I miss, this? I miss imagination, man. Remember imagination? Um, Let me imagine. So my the thing I want to ask you is, <laughs> I actually don't remember how long the Metal Gear games are. I know Metal Gear Four is pretty damn long, but um, a lot of that is cutscenes, um, which I'm okay. Long, I'm okay uh, with they, long cutscenes. Yeah, uh, most of them. I know. I know Metal Gear Solid's about ten hours, uh, and then two, two and three about fifteen hours. That's okay. Four, That's okay. Four is about twenty. Yeah, uh, five is the longest um, by far, with a lot of yeah. F- five, <clears throat> five is kind of weird because I mean, when I first played through five, I did, I put like three hundred something hours in that game. Um, upon playing it through again, it's most recent, about fifty hours. Yeah, and and that's to, that's to that's such a weird ramp up, right? Like like we were like we were talking about yeah. Red Dead, Rick with Red Dead and Last of Us and Metal Gear. It's like, how do we get here? How did we get to where it's like you went, we went from you know a game that's ten hours long to a game that's sixty hours long and seventy yeah. like what? Well, you Why? see, that's the I think this I mean, goes, I goes to world, the right? um, yeah exactly. Um, but it's I, I I'm really I'm ready for the open world like thing to just disappear or just slow down because I mean it has kind of slowed <clears> down the past couple of years but. I really think like they just see a, a studio or not a studio, like a publisher just sees open world and they're like, we got to make this thing. We got to make this thing 80 hours. Long. Huge. And I'm the person who beat Assassin, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I generally beat all the Assassin's Creed games, but man, that game was crazy. That game is yeah. crazy. There was whole continents that I didn't visit. And I, <laughs> I finished the main story and I was like, what? Or they why? Are, 
They don't need to do that. And, and like, like I was saying with Witcher before, right? Like I said that I enjoyed every moment of The Witcher, even though I can understand that people think yeah. it's too long. I totally get that. I mean, it's amazing cake. But it's yeah, it's if great that game cake. Was, if that game was split into two, I'd be fine. But I mean, it, it was. It was because the, the DLC in a way. was its own fucking game. <laughs> it was game. another, like, 50 hours right there. <laughs> I think that DLC was nominated for Best Game of the Year. <laughs> because it was its own fucking game. It's like, you could literally start from the menu and just play through the DLC yeah. as its own fucking thing. And so, but here's my thing. The, the Witcher 3 could have been 20 hours less and it would not have affected my opinion of The Witcher 3. I would have yeah. still, it still would have been one of my favorite games of all time. Yeah. Because, because I never, never once was I like, this game couldn't be shorter. I never thought that. Never. I, I mean, I, 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 yeah, I enjoyed all my time with it, but like, if it was shorter, I wouldn't have been like, oh, damn it. Like, I, I just would have, yeah. if this is what was presented to me, I would have, you know, ate, ate it up and been like, Mm, yeah, great cake. Because because even if you have you know a couple pieces of cake or a, like ten pieces of cake, it's still good fucking cake. So it, I mean, if if you were only ever shown that you could only ever have eaten one piece of cake, no one's ever going to be like, no one's ever going to think anything of, uh, uh, other than that. I guess know? I was just hoping <clears throat> three like would have like permeated throughout the industry and it kind of has but like i don't know i think I, the side think, quests have but that's kind like, of like uh, the side quest like side quests being meteor uh like i know like, ubisoft and sony with uh like horizon i know a lot yeah. both of them sh- took a lot of the like witcher side quest stuff and like like i know with assassin's creed origins was the first one to like you know I remember like doing a side quest and it like was like very twisty and turny and there was all kinds of stuff and it was very obvious like okay yeah. they they definitely took some cues but I yeah I don't know man I games are just too fucking long because and here's what I wrote I wrote in my notes the first thing I wrote is rarely do I ever think to myself if ever that this game is too short right for real i can't remember the last time i've beaten a game and been like that was just too short the last time i think i thought that was uh i don't know when i was like never like i hear that i hear that in reviews (laughs) all the time i hear people go you know it's really good but it was just you know i wish i wish it was a little more of it and i was thinking what and like people said that about like Untitled Goose Game, and people said that about um, Res- Resident Evil Three. <laughs> but I'm like, I see I don't there are different kind of players though, because I've, I mean, I've come across uh, players who, like, they're just they're just nose to the stone grinders. Like they only play games to get platinums. Yeah, that's it. Um, my, so I, I, my I drummer I can, Brian. That's that's him. He played. He played. <laughs> so I guess he, I can get that sentiment of like, if you really like grinding a game to get platinums, and if it's if you're enjoying the the grind circle, and the game ends uh, like too early. I, I guess I get that. Um, but that that's just not in my that's just not in my purview of like enjoyment. And then you have certain other very interesting. Um, I, I think Nintendo time and time again has shown us the way and we just refuse to fucking listen to Nintendo just like they refuse to listen to everyone else. Um, <laughs> they're in their own little bubble, man. I swear they're in like yeah, they in, are. In the freaking and Nintendo land. Clearly with breath of the wild is mm-hmm. the most, one of the more genius things ever in the history of open world games where it is as long as you want it to be. Yep. <laughs> that game is as long as you yep. want it to be. And what's uh, funny is that they reached back within their own, within their own gameplay past to kind of bring that. Because I mean, would you Breath say of the uh, Wild? Like every a, time a I played Breath of the Wild, like a link to the past. past, and then they just like, hey, you remember that game we put out in 1987, Legend of Zelda, where you just dropped in with a sword, and they're like, uh, yeah, there's a princess or something. Um, I don't know. Take your time, whatever. And, and the they, fact that that they, game was originally uh, made with that, with with like it was like with the top down like two D, but it had like the yeah. logs where you could like cross and and uh, that was so cool. And and I really did. To me, what really makes me want to explore, like what makes me want to play a game for a long time, 
is is not narrative. That's not what keeps me. That's why narrative structured game, game order. Um, I think that the the thing that makes me want to play a game for a long time is let me give me the option to finish it whenever I want, but also present me with this other stuff. So it's like here's the here's this a couple pieces of cake over here, and you can eat them whenever you want, and they're delicious. But here's like you know some parfait over here. Here's some mm. fucking strawberry sundae over here. Here's a banana split down the road. Which one would you want, brother? And that's <laughs> to me what is Breath of the Wild. I think yeah, it's a buffet it, of it, delicious it, desserts gameplay. And it's it, it it does even what The Witcher, even though The Witcher probably is still my favorite game of the generation. Breath of the Wild probably shortly behind you know behind that, um, just because of the narrative. I love the narrative in The Witcher, <laughs> but like. Gameplay wise, I mean, Breath of the Wild is, is almost completely flawless experience, and and uh, because of yeah, that, it is yeah. also just like so crazy because that game just wills you to explore for mm-hmm. no reason. No and reason. I remember like just walking, <laughs> just walking, and just be like, and just intrinsically drawn to some interesting piece of topography, and you're just like, what's that over there? And, and you never feel like you never feel like you're sacrificing. Uh, like you're going in one direction and you just see something cool and you you start veering off and you never I never felt like I was sacrificing that path A to go to path B. It all yeah, felt like, you're like path. what's up on that knoll and then you like start wandering up there and then you like from there the camera pans back a little bit and you see this like weird cave with a sleeping giant in it and you're like what the fuck is that and then you like go down there and then like you're just like you know it's just it's sort of this and and that's to me that is why open world games exist. And I, I think that's lost. Should and I think Ubisoft does not understand that concept. <laughs> they don't understand a lot of, that. Like, a lot of developers don't. I don't and because it's it should be subtle exploration. It should be like these things, and and that's why Breath of the Wild is so brilliant because it just brings you these little things that draw your eye in, like a weird tree or or some strange cave or something. And that's why I'm so excited for Ghost of Tsushima because that that they're taking that same approach now. That game may be hot garbage, and we may come back here after that game comes out and do our review or whatever, and be like, "Well, fucking, that was the worst game." Hey, as I long as I played. get to fight samurai, I, I highly doubt though that that'll be <laughs> because I loved Infamous Second Son, <laughs> and too. that game was a fucking launch title for yeah. the PS4, and they it haven't still looks made a game good too. <laughs> yeah, it does, and that, yeah, that still looks good. That was the first game that I played on my PS4 when I when I got it when Heather got me my PS4 for my birthday in 2014. Yeah, 2014. And Damn. and she was like, you know, what, you know, like obviously like what what game, you know, obviously I'm going to get you a game with it. Which one do you want? And I was just like, oh, I was like, oh, definitely Second Son. That's the coolest looking one. And I played the shit out of that and I love that game. I thought it was beautiful. It took millions of screenshots. And then I was like, man, I can't wait to see what they have to do next. Sucker Punch is such a good developer. I loved all the infamous games. I was like, they're such a good developer. I can't wait to see what they do next. And it was like, we're not going to do anything until the end of the console generation. <laughs> end of the I was cycle. Like, Damn, this game better be good. So I have faith. I have yeah, faith. yeah. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> you're you're much more. I'm much more of a narrative um, kind of person when it comes to games, like. Gameplay is nice. If it's good, it's nice. Uh, so for me, it's like narrative pacing. Like if a game, if a game, or heck, even like a movie doesn't have like good narrative pacing, like if it just doesn't grasp me, or if like there's an obvious lull, like if play in between two narrative segments and the gameplay is not engaging, it disconnects me from the narrative. But if narrative strong enough, then I could kind of like. Well, you know what? I can I can play this to like get to the good narrative. Um, and there's a few games to me that that is a, that is the case, and and that is uh, to me the two that come to mind are you know um, The Witcher Three, in my opinion, and The Witcher Two both had the, the narrative <laughs> pacing is what really drew you through because it was like man. I want to see what goes on because that's a game that traditionally, like Skyrim, would it would be like you make your own character and you're kind of disconnected from the narrative already when you do that. Yeah. Um, whereas when you are a bespoke yeah. character and you're just like, I am this character and I'm a badass. I'm a Jedi Batman and I'm gonna go fucking. I'm a Jedi Batman. <laughs> you know, that, that, that's super true. Like, because um, like, uh, 
The Witcher really does kind of because mostly most Western RPGs are that Skyrim style where you're just this faceless uh, guy, uh, <clears throat> and you go. And the story is kind of separate from separate from you. You know, the, the world's not really connected. Yeah, to the those character. stories are never even if they're decently written, like Fallout Three and and even Skyrim uh, and Oblivion have decent yeah, narratives, yeah. but they're not like amazing <laughs> because <laughs> Skyrim is tenuous. I like Fallout Three. I like. Fallout Three's name, but even the ending was uh, weird. Like, it was like Witcher Three like, kind of <laughs> what a giant giant patriot robot. <laughs> oh no, that part was awesome. That was DLC. <laughs> that was so rad. Dude, oh yeah, that was DLC. <laughs> are you talking about Liberty what Prime? Liberty Prime? Oh dang! What does he say? Yeah. yeah, What bro, does he like, say? He's like he's like uh, he I starts like spitting out. He starts he spits spitting rhymes. out like propaganda. It's like he talks. He spits rhymes, bro. Oh, Liberty Lord. Prime spits the rhyme. I am Liberty Prime. Congratulations, you have been freed. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that was awesome, but that was DLC. So that, yeah, like, that was DLC. Been, that was like the, the main campaign. The main um, campaign ended strangely. It was just they, very it's, abrupt. It's like they took the because, uh, like that. That's why I like the Japanese style role playing games because they're much more about characters. Um, like they're much more character focused. Um, that's why I like The Witcher Three so much because like you felt like you were inhabiting this character that already existed before you, and you kind of got to puppet him around. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, you just you just yeah you just you just possessed him and just sort of like did. Kind yeah, of stuff it's like you. It's like you got to play his role instead of you playing a role. It's like you are you are Gerald. Gerald of River. <laughs> <laughs> Gerald of Rivers, um, but yeah, generally games are too long. You hear that? You hear this now? Trey Trey Baker, don't come Trey, at Trey, me. Trey Baker, I, Trey cool. Baker, don't come at me with with, with your <laughs> with your your Teddy Rupskin quotes, okay? Please, okay? please do come at us. Though. Please come at us, <laughs> said Teddy Rupskin. He Trey just Baker. he just sends us a tweet with a picture of Teddy Rupskin. <laughs> I don't need. I don't need my god dang voice actors getting involved in game politics. <laughs> why, did, why did why did why did why did game politics have to exist? Why can't we just why can't we just well, play games? Clearly, you can't just post. Like, and again, I, I don't I don't like the guy who posted that that tweet, Jason Schreier. That just said, but because usually his tweets are like really like just like okay, guy, come on, because he's like a Kotaku over he's like he's like super over like offended about everything and it's just like okay come on and then the but then, he, then he finally just posts something very ambiguous mm -hmm. and it's like video games are too long and then everyone's like what are you just trying to say because <laughs> like, everyone knows he's talking he's playing the last of us they know that he's playing it and they know that's what he's talking about but who cares man why just like you're gonna go after you can't him. have a <laughs> like that video I sent you opinions, uh, but I I like this thing. <laughs> Wait, you like that thing? I hate that thing. <laughs> Let's just I hate that thing. Video How games are cool. Video games are fun. At, at least try to have fun while while discussing them, right? I don't agree. Yeah, and and. I disagree. <laughs> yeah. But I, I mean I, I just I just think that yeah, let's just you know what? Everybody have you know I know people are gonna come at and say, you know, oh I, I like my games long and, and the other the the other final mm -hmm. thing I wanted to bring up is I do think there's there's the whole um kid syndrome right where you're a kid and you have a console and you only get like one game every you know whatever like when least, i was a kid i, yeah, I got like we a, a kids, game every I don't, maybe I don't six know. months maybe if i was maybe. you know it was like basically you got a, you could get a game for your birthday you get one for christmas maybe you know so it was like um you really had to really choose and that's why like i remember like i remember like staring at like the game pro and and uh and nintendo power stuff and just being like which one of these is better <laughs> and it's like do i get hybrid heaven or gauntlet legends fuck what do i do you went with and hybrid heaven didn't you i went with both <laughs> eventually but you i did spoiled. first i remember first, it's I true though because like you uh, i don't know like this is probably hybrid just heaven. rose tinted glasses but like hybrid heaven was kind of cool though 
Um, <laughs> it's probably terrible now. It's probably aged. It probably, it probably aged like hot. I want to play it so bad again. Um, but like sequel. one of my favorite gaming memories is playing uh, Air Airwolf on the NES. It's like this terrible game based on this 80s TV show about this attack helicopter. Super cool show. Great theme song. Not a good game, but I have such good memories because like that was that was it. I, I that's the only game I had for like a year. And that's all mm-hmm. I played and I liked it. That's was it too only thing? It was too long. <laughs> it was too long. <laughs> well, that's what Link to the Past was for me. It was like it, it was my only game. Like when I that first got a Super Nintendo, it was game. literally just it was it yeah. wasn't like it wasn't like what games are you playing? It was like I have a I have a game. I have a game for my <laughs> game thing. And it was a lot of fun and I played that shit forever. I, I I wish there were like game clocks back then because I would love to know how many hours I put in my original cart of That was of uh, that that was the first game I ever um did like repeat plays through playthroughs. Like I would just oh, like beat it. Yeah. And then just Same. beat it again. And then just beat again. And then just beat it again. And then Carnage because... came out and they had New Game Plus and I was just like Oh, what? <laughs> I can There's... keep my items in my levels. What? That yeah, uh, that was that was very like before its time. Oh uh, yeah, that was the first game to have New Game Plus, and honestly, I think the best implemented New Game Plus because it tied in with the narrative like perfectly. It's like this game was made for New Game Plus. It's a game about time travel. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, can go, I can go wherever I want. I'm good. Yeah. I go but back. Every, every game should have name game plus. Every game should have it. But uh, yes, we're getting off topic. Games, everyone. What do you think? We want to hear your opinions, or at least read them, um, and then we'll flagrantly disregard them. Yeah. Uh, but let <laughs> us know. Thanks. Um, <laughs> yeah, but that's those are our opinions. Um, you know, I think I think we kind of have a consensus here. But you know, you may be a disagreer. And, yeah. and we want to hear from you. Yeah. So let us know what you think. Um, this has been another episode of the Critical Beard Podcast. Critical Beard Podcast. I have been your host, Cardinal, and this has been your host. Not Matthew Broderick. I'm Meatball. Ah, he got I'm it. Meatball. He finally remembered. He got it. And, you know, that's 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 great. And, uh, you know, thank you guys for joining us today. We love to have a discussion with you. So leave some comments down below. Hit the subscribe bell. And, uh, you know, we'll see you in the future or the past because of time travel. Days of smoochy past. Oh.